Well, today we're starting a brand new series called Connect the Dots. And uh, we're going to be talking about for over the next few weeks how we can be part of the, the body of Christ and what it means for us to be connected, to grow, and to serve within the local body of Christ. You know, I'm so thankful for Church 180 and for the opportunities and the blessing that so many people have experienced. And over these next few weeks, we're going to learn how to, to grow, how to serve, how to connect and what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. I'm just so thankful for what God is going to do. And, and this scripture that we're going to be using over these next few weeks is this. It's Matthew 18:20. It says, For where there are two or three that gather together as followers, I am there with them. Where two or more, in other, other translations, where two or more are gathered in my midst, in the midst, they, they, where two or more are gathered there I am also in their midst. When, when, when believers come together, there's something powerful that happens. When you and I come to church and we gather together in this place as believers, as followers, there's something powerful that happens. There's something powerful that happens when we, we have that connection, when we have that, 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 that fellowship, when we have that, that, that one mind and one heart to serve God. And this is a thought that I want to enter this this series with. You with me today, everybody? Amen. Okay. Let's get some amens here today, all right? All right. So when the right people gather for the right reasons, God does amazing things. When the right people gather together for the right reasons, God does amazing thing. See, I love the church. I love the body of Christ. I mean, I wouldn't trade being a, a pastor for anything, but if I wasn't a pastor, I would still love the local church. I would, I would still be passionate. Before I was a pastor, I was passionate about the church. Man, when my, the church doors were open, my church was open like four times during the week, and I was there every single time. I could not get enough of God. I could not get enough of my, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And the, because of the church, I am who I am. I've been able to grow into who I am and to, into what God has done in my life. Through the church, I became a part of a community of believers, people who will lift me up, help me to grow, people I can work alongside of in, in, in different various roles within the bodies, serving Jesus through the local church. I made connections within the body of Christ that, that are connections that I'll, I will keep for the rest of my life. I don't know if anybody else feels like that, but you've made connections within the body of Christ that you will, you, you'll have for the rest of your life. Because when the, the right people gather for the right reasons, God does amazing things. I mean, many people go through life without many meaningful connections. It's true. Many people do. They, they, they come to church and they, and they do the thing. They're, they're strictly business. They, they come in Sunday morning and they, they, they sing the songs and it's great. And it's great to show up to church and, and do all these things and we need to. And I wish more people would sing songs and, 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 and show up to church. We, we give, we listen, and they listen to the word. And as soon as Jesus' name, amen, happens, no sooner does that happen, your keys in ignition. And man, you burn out of here. <laughs> that was a joke, okay? <laughs> I mean, we do everything right. We pray, we read the Bible, we, 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 we do all these things. We worship, we lift up our hands and worship. And day in and day out, we come in the church and we do our thing and we, and we, and we, and we, we, we come here Sunday mornings, but it, but it seems like something is missing. It seems like something is, is, we're lacking something in our relationship with God. Something seems missing. For some reason, we're not getting the whole picture. We never, we never quite connected the dots at the church that the church is about Jesus, but also about community. If you think of each one of us as a dot and, 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 and Jesus the big picture, if we connect the dots, we see, a, we see something, we see something, we see a picture when we're connected of Jesus that we wouldn't see if we were all by ourselves. Because we are the body of Christ. We are the, the picture of him here on earth. We, we represent him. And it's when we come together that we are the body. We cannot be the body when we're alone and disconnected. We've got to be connected, part of the corporate body. And then when we come together and all these dots connect, we become the, the picture to this world of, of who Jesus is. We become the hope of the world, the local church. We bring the hope, we bring the, the message of Jesus Christ 
to our community and to this world. See, without connecting those dots, you're never going to get the whole picture. And for some of us, we're, we're, we feel like there's something missing. There's something, I mean, I'm, I'm having a great time at church. I'm growing in church. And I, I believe that over these past couple of years, come to Church 180, that God has, has grown me and God has done amazing things. But, but still, there seems something is missing, something that needs to happen for me to move to the, the next level in my relationship with Jesus. And today, what I want to talk about is the importance of biblical relationships. We're going to be talking about connect groups and why they are so important from a biblical perspective, why they are so important in our spiritual walk in connecting with God and connecting with our local body. Sunday mornings are great, but I believe within in the, in the context of connect groups, what are connect groups some of you are asking is that we have, we have an opportunity to sign up for them right now. Connect groups are a small group ministry that, that we do about three times a year. They're small groups that meet in different locations around the community. We, we study different studies. We get together, have fellowship. We get to know each other. We, we study God's word together and have a meaningful time as believers. And I encourage you to sign up and look at the, look at the insert in your bulletin and, and, and find one that you connect with. Find one that you, that you want to be a part of and be a part of it. Be committed to it. And be committed to the other people in your group and be a part of what God is doing here at Church 20 because this is the vision for connect groups in Church 1A. The vision isn't for this to be just another activity in our church. But the vision is for them to be the life of our church where real growth and real community occurs. Spiritual maturity is not going to come just by coming on Sunday mornings. If you want to go deeper, if you really want to grow in your walk with God, I believe as we come together, build relationships with other believers, the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. That, we, that we're good for each other, we help each other grow, and, and, and in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the, the place of where there's relationships being built, a small group where we can discuss, and where we can talk, and where we, a safe place where we can, we can have the questions that we need to ask, and we can help answer questions that need to be answered, we, we can be there for one another, really develop a sense of community within the body. When the right people gather for the right reasons, God shows up, and amazing things happen. I believe that when the right people gather within connect groups, that amazing things are going to happen. We're going to see God grow in our lives. Many people have experienced so much blessing through connect groups, through small groups. And I believe that you will as well as you sign up. And, and see, this is the thing is I, I believe that within all of us, all of us sitting here today, that there is greatness, there's potential, there's possibilities more than what you could even imagine. God created us with purpose. God created us with a plan. God has put greatness inside of you. Anybody believe that? Or am I the only one that's seeing this right now? I believe that there's greatness inside of you. God has created you with unique gifts and talents and and abilities and and a destiny that, that, that God has for you. For some of you, there's a, there's a ministry that, that God is calling you into. Maybe for some of you, you're, 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 that makes a huge impact in this world. For some of you, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a marriage, a phenomenal marriage, a, a, a good, healthy marriage. Maybe you're not married right now. You're looking forward to a, a marriage that's healthy and strong and where you and your, 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 your spouse can minister to other people. Maybe, you're, maybe the, inside of you, there's a, 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 you, you want to raise healthy children, world-changing children to make a, a difference in this world. Maybe you want to start a business. Maybe it's, maybe it's inventions or strong, a stronger relationship with God. Inside of you, God has placed desires inside of every single one of us. But you're missing one ingredient. You're not surrounded by the right people. Here's another thought. You'll never do all that God wants you to do without the right people around you. From the very beginning, God said it's not good for men to be alone. Yeah, talking about man and woman in marriage. But there's more to that. We were, we were built for relationships. We were built to be together. We we're built to be as a family. The Bible says two are better than one. The Bible also says that if, if one can put a, a, a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. You see, two, is, two, two people is not twice as much as one in this case. Two is 10 times more than one. There's a power that comes together when we come together, when we, we, when we unite, when we become one body with one mind. For a moment, I just want you to think about this, and then I'm going to ask you just to think about your life here, think about 
Think about some relationships in your life. Right now, take a moment, and I want you to look at the five most dominant voices in your life. Think about it. Who are the five most dominant voices in your life? Show me the five most dominant voices in your life, and I can show you the trajectory of your life. The people that we are close, that are closest to us, that we let speak into our lives, will determine where our life goes. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good character. You see, if you're friends with the people, that, if they're the people who are the most dominant voices in your life, and your best friends are those who the, that you work with, but they're always complaining about their job, and they're always complaining of how, how much it stinks to work here, and, and how the boss never understands me, and how this really stinks, and, and you know, people are like that. You've heard it, right? Only me? Okay. All right. <laughs> My job's awesome. I've got I to say that. All right. <laughs> But if the five closest people in your life are people that you work with and they're always negative, they've got a bad attitude, they're always complaining, and, and they, they don't like their job, and, and if those are the people who are speaking into our life, we've capped our career. We've, we've capped the potential to be successful at our job because these are the voices that we're allowing into our life. We struggle to have a, a positive attitude that we need to succeed. On the other hand, we have friends who have a, a positive outlook and, and, and do their job with excellence. They honor those in authority and, they, and, and they, they believe, hey, you know what? I believe that we can get promoted. I believe that if we do a good job, if we excel, if we further our education, if we, if, we, if, we, if we go above and beyond, I believe that we can get promoted. I believe that we can rise to the top. I believe that if we work hard, we can be successful. All of a sudden, you've uncapped that lid on your success in your career. Who are the people that are speaking into your life? Your five closest friends have bad marriages and have bad, have bad relation histories. They're always talking bad about their spouse, that their spouse, hey, he doesn't do anything right. He's so lazy and, man, uh, he's so good for nothing, man. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking when I married him, man. He, he, the, the, she, man, she's always a nag, man. My, my wife, man. People are always talking about their wives and their, their husbands and how bad it is talking and, and, ha- and, and t- talking, hanging out with people of the opposite sex. Chances are that you won't have a successful marriage if those are the people who are speaking into your life. On the other hand, the five most dominant voices in your life are people's strong marriages, they're, they're people who put God first, they put the effort and the time to, to, to sacrifice for their spouse, to, to have a good marriage, and they, they do whatever it takes, they're, they don't feel like they always have to be right, but they, they humble themselves, they prefer the other person over themselves, they serve one another, they have a vision they share with one another, chances are... If those are the people that you have in your life, speaking into your life, your marriage will do a lot better than if you had the other people speaking into your life. Maybe you want to develop a closer relationship with God, but man, the, the people who have the dominant voices in your life, man, they're always going out, out partying. They, church isn't important to them. They, they, they have no problem skipping church, going and do something. They, they have no problem just, just going out doing things they shouldn't be doing. They don't spend time in the Word. They don't spend time in prayer. They, 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 don't, they, ha, they don't want anything to do with the things of God. And if those are the five dominant voices that we have in our life, we are going to struggle in our relationship with God, on the other hand, if the people that we surround ourselves with are people who are passionate about God, they spend time in His Word, they, they, they pray, they, they love being in church, they, they love the community of the body of Christ, and the relationship with God is so important, they serve in the church, they give, chances are you'll be able to, to grow and be encouraged by them. Who we surround ourselves with determines the success that we will have in life. If you're tired of where you are right now, I take a close look at who you're surrounding yourself with. I got some amens. That's good. That's good. That's good. (laughs) Because when the right people gather for the right reasons, God does amazing things. When the right people gather for the right reasons, God does amazing things. See, I got saved when I was about 20, 21 years old, and, and man, I was, uh, I started going to church. I wanted to be there, and I wanted to, to be in the house of God, and I was just so passionate about it, but for some reason, when I was there, I loved hearing God's word. I loved being part of the worship, but at the same time, I felt so disconnected. 
I didn't know anybody at that time. There wasn't too many young people in the church, and uh, I felt very disconnected. But as time went on, I began, I, I wanted to grow closer to God. I wanted to be more involved, and I, I knew that something had to change. So I got involved in a, a small group of guys who got together, who were there. They, they encouraged one another. They grew together. They served, and they, they, they're men that are passionate about God. And I got involved with them, and, and when I got involved with them, that was a game changer in my life. It was a game changer in my relationship with God because I, I finally went from being just an attender to somebody who was a part of the body. These people began to introduce me to other people in the church. They began to, they began to lead me and, and give me opportunities to serve. We, 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 we studied the Bible together. We, we prayed. I was able to, in the, in the early days of my faith, I, was, I had people who I could, I could ask those tough questions to. And they'd give me answers, a place where people wouldn't judge me, and be, that they, they'd care for me and love me and help me to grow in my faith. If they were single, the be people, they, they, they wanted purity. They wanted to be sexually pure. If they, were, if they were married, they were faithful to their wives. There were people I could look up to. This changed everything in my, with my walk with God. I had, all of a sudden, I had people to pray with, people to talk with, people to discuss the Bible with people have community with. If I needed help moving, they were there. They're were, they were helping me move. If I, was, if, I, if I was in the hospital, they'd come visit me in the hospital. If, it, if things were going really bad in my life, they were, they were there saying, hey, we're praying for you. We're here for you. And that's when I began to experience what real community within the body of Christ was. I went from being an attender to being a real part of the community. Time went on. Opportunities began for me to serve, and I served with my friends, and we, we met every Thursday night, and we, we either went out to eat, we went to the church, wherever we met someplace, and we just got together, and it was, it was great. Sometimes we, we did a Bible study, other times we didn't. We just hung out and did other things that were just fun, but the, the point was that we built relationships with one another, and discipleship was able to happen within that context, and, and as, as time went on later on, I, I developed other relationships that, 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 that projected me to, to God's call on my life. Soon my pastor took me under his wing. We developed a relationship there, and I, he was able to be that, that kind of community to me and be able to be there to pray for me and to, to, to help me. He it was a man who, who, who was a very seasoned pastor, and he, he oversaw many churches, and he, 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 he looked at me and believed in me. It's because, and he gave me opportunities, it's because of becoming a part of the community of believers that I believe that I am where I am right now. I'm doing what God has called me to do because I plugged into where God had placed me. I chose not just to be an attender, but I was a part of what God, where God had, had planted me. I knew that God had put me here for a reason because, man, I kept on showing up every Sunday. <laughs> kept on showing up. I'm like, okay, God, what do you want me to do here? You want me to serve? You, well, God said, well, start building relationships. And that's when everything changed. If you're here and you feel disconnected, I encourage you to sign up for Connect Groups. These men had a tremendous impact on, on my life. And I want to talk to you today from, a, from an Old Testament story in the Bible that reminds me of the first small group I was a part of. These guys, they were there to, they were here to, there to help me to grow, and as, as, I, as I matured, I was able to help other people grow and able to make friends with them as well. And these guys that were there with me, they had my back no matter what. They're there to pray for me, to, to encourage me, and I was able to do the same thing for them, and we're able to grow together. See, the Israelites they, at, the, at the time, in the scripture that we're going to be reading out of, actually, if you want to turn your Bible to 1 Samuel 14, we're going to be talking through the scripture a little bit. And in the scripture, the Israelites, they're, they're being defeated. King Saul had become the, the, the king of Israel, the first king of Israel. Uh, before then, up until this point, they, the Israel had what we call judges, not the kind of judges we have now, but these were rulers. They, ju they, they ruled over the land of, of Israel. But Israel looked at the other nations and said, hey all, hey, all the other nations have kings. Why don't we have kings? And because of their grumbling, God allowed for it and, and, and anointed a, a great man that stood head and shoulders over everybody else. His name was King Saul. The problem with King Saul was he was chosen and anointed by God to be the king. But he came to a place where he, he trusted in himself more than he trusted in God. 
And he had a son named Jonathan. And, and Jonathan and Saul, they, they went out and they, they fought wars and had great conquests. And, and even though they were together, there was a disconnect. And they're fighting the Philistines at one point, and they were, they're running from the Philistines. And what had happened in, during that time of war before then, the Philistines made sure that the Israelites at the time didn't have any blacksmiths. The only people that had swords and shields at the time were Jonathan and Saul. So the rest of the Is- Israelites are running around with slings and sticks and clubs. They're scared, they're trembling, they're shaking in their boots. The Bible says they're, they're hiding under rocks, they're hiding in caves. They were, they're, they're terrified of the Philistines, but yet they're following their leader Saul and his son Jonathan in conquest. Saul was leading the army, Saul, but here comes a, a part where, where Saul, he's hiding with 600 people in caves. They're giving up, they're outmatched, they're overwhelmed. They're fearful. And I'm sure that they felt very alone, even, did you know that you can feel very alone even though you're surrounded by so many people? So 1 Samuel 14, verse 1 says, one day, key word there, key phrase there, one day Jonathan, son of Saul, said to the young man bearing his armor, come, let's go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Like many of us, some of us are missing relationships, real meaningful relationships in our life. With Jonathan and Saul, there was a disconnect there. Jonathan's dad should have been the most dominant voice in his life, and, and he wasn't. And, and, and some of you even might feel that way. There's people that you feel that should have been dominant voices in your life are not here to be able right now to speak into your life right now. I grew up in a home where my, where, where my family separated when I was very, very young, and my dad wasn't always there to speak into my life. I had to find th- those places, other, pla- other, other places else, and when I finally got into the body of Christ, I had those people. My pastor at that time, he became just like my dad. He spoke into my life. He was able to tell me the hard things, give me wisdom. I learned what a, a healthy marriage looked like. Because I had no idea what that looked like. He taught me about how to handle finances. He taught me how to, how to love my wife. He taught me how to raise children before I was even, before I was even married. He, he, he taught me so much. He invested so much into me. And he, he was that dominant voice into my life. When I talk about my mentor, if you ever heard me say that, I'm talking about my pastor. He lives in, in Dallas, Texas right now. And he's retired. He's enjoying life right now. I'm not, I don't know if he's enjoying life, but man, he's, he's, he's in Texas. I'm good with that, you know. Someday I'll make it down there. But. <laughs> but Jonathan didn't have that dominant voice in his life that he should have had. And many of us, we're lacking that dominant voice. Like, man, I wish I had somebody there to tell me about this when this happened. When I was a teenager, I yearned for somebody to be there, to speak into my life, I look back at my, my teenage years, I wish I had somebody who has spoken into my life and told me, man, don't do that, you're crazy, stop it, that's unwise, that's foolish, get your head on and, and, and slap me in the head or something and tell me to get it screwed on straight or something. But we all need somebody in our lives to speak into our lives, to encourage us, to, 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 to help us, to give us wise counsel, but But like many of us, Jonathan was missing that kind of relationship with his dad. So here they were. They were hiding in the caves, hiding under rocks. They were hiding in the bushes, it even says, with their slingshots, with their clubs, with their sticks. The Philistines had blacksmiths. They were making swords. They were making spears. Very intimidating. I would be terrified if all I had was a stick (laughs) and I was going up against a samurai, all right? (laughs) That would be very intimidating to me. They weren't samurais, but you guys alive this morning? You good? All right, good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Maybe I'm just cracking bad jokes. That's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> but we all need somebody to speak into our lives. But he didn't tell his father. He didn't tell his father that that he that he's going to go out and he's going to take care of some business by himself. While 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 Saul was hiding with 600 men shaking in their boots. Saul was a man who disobeyed God and did things his own way, and, and God's blessing kind of left, left what he was doing, and, and he didn't follow God's command. Saul was there in Jonathan's life, but he wasn't there at the same time. 
And this word here in the scripture, it says, and one day. Here they are, hiding in caves, under rocks, in the bushes. Jonathan really didn't have anybody to give him wise counsel. It says, one day, Jonathan, one day, everything changed. One day, Jonathan said, enough's enough. Enough of this. Man, we're, we're hiding. This is pitiful. What do we do next? And one day, he decided to, to seek out the right relationships. And he went to his armor bearer, somebody who he, who he could trust. You see, relationships, meaningful relationships don't happen by accident. You have to intentionally seek and build the right relationships. Life-changing relationships rarely happen by accident. We have to invest in other people. We have to reach out to others. We need to make effort to build these relationships. If you're waiting for them to come to you, that's not how it works. We have to take steps. For you, it might mean sign up for a connect group, get involved, serve. And these are people that we need to be purposeful about being, being around. And for some of us, they're few and far between. Some of us, we need mentors in our life, and they're very few and far between. And some of us are looking for somebody who mentored, mentored them like somebody mentored me. You know, this is what I'll say about that. Mentors don't come to us. We chase mentors. They don't chase us. If you need someone to speak into your life, find somebody. If, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're newly married and maybe you're, you're, you're coming up with some challenges, find somebody. Chase somebody down who has a healthy marriage and say, hey, can I sit down with you? You've been married for 30 years. You've done it, you've done it right, and I know that you've had some struggles, but you got through them. Can, can you just help us? Can you speak into our lives? Maybe you're struggling financially, and maybe there's somebody that, 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 that man, they, they're, they're doing it right. They had their hard times. Maybe they, they, they were in debt one time. They got out of it, and now they're, they're on the right track, and they're, they're doing all right. But you're over here and you're struggling. You're like, man, I don't know what to do. Maybe find somebody who's doing it right and build a relationship with them. Sit down with them and ask them. There's value in sitting down with people who are more experienced than us. I have people in my life who I sit down, who would be my elders, that I sit down with and we talk. And I allow them to speak into my life. And they say, no. Let's rethink this here. Oh, no, that's, that's a great idea. You should do that. I'm encouraging you. Mentors don't chase after mentees. <laughs> if you want to be mentored, you chase after those who have what you need. You sit down with them, going off track here, you sit down with them, prepare your questions, and have a notebook. Okay? A little word of advice to you. That's for somebody here. But these people are few and far between. But we all need the right people to help us. We all need all the right people in our life to help us to be all that God has called us to be. First of all, I want to give you some three points about the right people and, and why God puts them in our life and why we need the right people in our life. First of all, to navigate obstacles and temptations. 1 Samuel 14, 4, it says, On each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff. One was called Bozes, and the other was called Sina. Bozes means slippery. Sina means thorny. See, we need the right people in our lives <laughs> to help us navigate through those slippery, slick conditions. <laughs> we all go get in them. We need also people that are the right people to help us to find ourselves and stick when we find ourselves in sticky situations. You ever been in a sticky situation? I've been in sticky situations. I needed some good counsel. I needed people to speak into my life and say, hey, this is what you need to do. On every journey of faith, we have to navigate very either slippery situations or sticky situations or, or thorny obstacles, no matter how you want to look at it. And we need people in our lives that we can say, hey, help me know the right thing to do. Right now, I'm praying about it, but I don't really... I'm confused as to whether God is speaking to me right now and I need you to speak into my life and maybe confirm some things that God is speaking to me. Would you pray with me? Would you hold my feet to the fire and challenge me if I need accountability? Challenge me if I'm wrong. See, everybody needs people like that in their lives. They need people who, will, who in those sticky and thorny situations will be able to speak into our lives. 
We can't have that when we're all alone. We decide to be disconnected. When we choose to surround ourselves with these dominant voices, these people who, 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 are, who, are, who can speak well into our lives, we place us, ourselves in a position where we can act in wisdom. Some of you right now may be in a thorny or, or slippery position right now, and, and you wish that there was someone who cared and somebody who understood what you're going through right now, understood your feelings, understood, man, the, the situation that you're in. Secondly, we need the right people in our lives to, for, secondly, to, to overcome wavering faith. 1 Samuel 14, 6 says this, Jonathan said to his young bear, armor bearer, let's go over to the outposts to these uncircumcised fellows, that sounds funny for people who aren't, aren't familiar with the Bible, but circumcision was something that only the Jews at the time did as a sign of their covenant with God. The Gentiles, that was not a practice that they had, so it might sound funny to you, but I want to explain that. Perhaps the Lord will, will act on our behalf. Perhaps. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Perhaps. So you look at it, 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 it can say maybe. There's faith, and then there's uncertainty. We believe that God's directing us in this way, and then we're like, well, maybe, but, but yeah, and maybe. Yeah, you ever been like that? You've got these decisions in your life and, and, or, or something that God wants you to do, and you're like, yeah, I've got faith for it now, and then you go, and, and it's like, well, perhaps, maybe, uh, what do I do? <laughs> We've been there. Isn't that how it is sometimes? See, we need the right people around us to do what God has called us to do. You see, God put a vision in my heart to start a church years ago. This is a few years ago before we even launched. I felt like God was working in my heart. I began to hear the voice of God, and I was sure. And other times, like, man, this is too big of, this is too big of a thing. God, are you really speaking to me? And God, what, what, is this really you? Are you really doing this in my life? Man, I, I'm, I'm, we're, we're serving in a church, and everything is going awesome right now, and you want us to pick up and leave to go start a church that doesn't have any people or any money? <laughs> I know nobody down there. And I began to share my heart to some of my mentors, to some of my leadership, people that I allowed to speak into my life, other pastors. They said, no, Jeff, you're, you're, you're hearing from God. I believe that God has really put a burden in your heart to do this, to establish a church that reaches many, many people. Many, and, and for generations and generations to come, people will be affected by this church. Go do it. I believe that God has anointed you. God has called you to do it. And I needed those people in my life to confirm what God was speaking into my heart. Some of us are super spiritual and feel like we can hear God every time he speaks to us. But no, that's not how it always works. God sends people. God will send a man of God. God will send your parent. God will send somebody to speak into your life to confirm what God has been speaking to you already. There's times where, yeah, we know God speaks to us. There's other times where we need those people to say yes God is saying this. God says do this. Or God speaks to you in another way through them. So we need the right people around us to do what God has called us to do. But what is that thing in your life? Maybe God wants you, what, what does God want to do in your life that hasn't been done yet because you haven't surrounded yourself with those people? What is it that's being left undone right now because those who you allow as the dominant voices in your life aren't conducive for to you to move forward into what God has you to do. You want to do what God wants you to do. You know that, there's the, that, 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 that God has, has laid out some things for you. You, you. you sense something or you desire something. You desire a, a closer relationship with God. You, you desire to move forward in your faith. But you have not yet surrounded yourself with people who will help make that happen. People who can encourage you. People you can learn from. People who you can have just, you know, just, just, just be on the same page with spiritually. And we need those people in our life. But what is it, that, that thing in your life? Thirdly, we need the right people so they can have your back. Verse 7, Samuel chapter 14. Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. Go ahead. I'm with you, heart and soul. The armor bearer, Jonathan developed this relationship with the armor bearer. They were working together. They fought in battles together. They developed a relationship together. And there's a level of trust that happened there. And the armor bearer said, Jonathan, 
Whatever you say, let, let, I'm, I'm, I'm behind you 100%. I've got your back. No matter what God has told you to do, I'm there right by your side. I'm going to help you. Some of us are praying for a miracle. We need somebody that has our back. For, for some of us, we're going through a financial situation. We need someone who has our back. For some of us, we're having problems in our marriage, and we need somebody who's their heart and soul who has our back. We need to surround ourselves with those people who, who, who can have our back. Moses, he was, he, 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 was, he was moving the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. The great exodus. He parted the Red Sea and he went into Canaan. And he, went, he, went, he went into the promised land. God never let him enter, but he fought war. There was, but but they, they had to fight people and there was a, a great battle and, and they were losing the war. And, and Moses was standing there with, with two of his friends, Aaron and Hur. When the battle was going bad, and when Moses lifted up his hands, the battle would go on and Israel would win. But when his arms got tired, Israel would lose. Aaron and Hur were able to stand side by side with him, lift up his arm, lift him up, so that he could see victory in his life. We need people in our lives that can hold us up, lift you up when you're down, and help you walk into, into the victory that God has called you to walk in. We need people who will encourage us. We need people who will lift us up. We need, we need people who will speak into our lives that will correct us, who will be able to, to love our children and love our family, and maybe even people that we go on vacation with, or, or maybe be there when you've got to, got to bury somebody. Two are better than one, and you can't do everything that God wants you to do without the right people in your life. So let's pray. and have the worship team come up. God created us for relationship. God created us to be connected. God created us as a body, people who come together as a united body, as a body of Christ to do great things in this world. We can partner up and, and, and see lives change, and we can see our life change. And when we partner up together in ministry, we can, we can see other people's lives change. But we can't do it on our own. But the greatest connection that we can have today is not a connection with somebody else that's here. The greatest connection that we can have is a connection with, with Jesus Christ and God the Father. And we only get the connection with God is through Jesus. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except for by me. That's when, we, that's when the dots start to connect. That's the first, that's the, the one to the two. That's the one to the two. We make that first connection, the connection for, to, to, to God the Father through Jesus Christ. That's when we confess our sins and say, God, I can't do it without you. I need to be connected. And because of what Jesus did on the cross, he bore all my sins. He, he paid for all my sins. And he bore them on the cross. And because of what he did on the cross, my sins are forgiven and I can be made new. Let's pray.